So hello everyone, I want to apologize for the very janky quality of this video because you have to realize that I'm using a very crappy setup but hopefully my future videos will be better. Either way, this video will take a look at uh, the reinforcement of your 3D prints in both the X and Z axis. Yeah, this is gonna be amazing, so yeah! Sorry for the crappy video, I'm gonna voice over some of the crap because it's crap. <laughs> Hello, Amy here. I printed these two test pieces standing up and almost lost it. It looks kind of ugly for some reason, but I printed this uh, laying down. You can see from the bed the shine I print on the polycarbonate sheet, which is an excellent print. So, this is not gonna break very easily, so I'm just gonna try to flex it. Look how much it flexes. I'm gonna use a very unscientific method of putting all the pressure. My fingers can are recording it. This is all the pressure my fingers have that bends that much. Now, the line ones are gonna just break probably because they're very thin and long. But I figured I'd try, you know, carbon fire, glass fire. I should probably sit down and stop staring at the camera like this. So I figured that the line experiment might be a good kitchen says that. The line ones, ooh, they actually didn't come out looking that bad. I can see my printer is partially broken. And my tea is ready, coffee. The lying ones could benefit from the carbon fiber because I know the resin is not going to help them, but the laying ones could actually be strengthened from the Z. So let's see if I can break them. What? This is PTG. This should break. Ow. Sorry, I dropped it. Ow. Okay, I broke it, but it took super ugly. Ha! Huh. Look, it didn't exactly break along the layer lines. It kind of did, but look at this. Way more impressive. Oh my god, I almost accidentally broke that. Yep, but the same amount of force is doing uh, pretty much nothing to this. So yeah, I'm not gonna throw this in trash just in case, but let's carbon reinforce these. So Amy here again. Sorry for the shetty. Go down, chair. Go down, chair. Chair, I said go down, you annoying little. Okay, I got some coffee while this dries. For out of curiosity, I only super glued this on top. And look, when they actually glue it, it goes kind of transparent ish. Yeah, it goes transparent when it's glued, which is kind of interesting. So, let's do the same thing again. I'm kind of worried. Oh. Yeah, this is definitely more rigid, but still flexible. Only one side. I'm actually gonna glue the other side because my hands are sticky. But, eh. I'm gonna let the Z light strength and test them probably to, but yeah. This isn't, this is actually only a bit more rigid, but it is more rigid, I can tell. So, you know, I only put like three strands, literally, look, it's just three, it's just three thin strands, it didn't add any height to it, probably, because look, I just did this for fun, because I wanted to go slow, you know, not go all in at once, so I'm gonna add on more strands on the back side. The same amount, actually, only three fibers, because remember, this is the actual stuff we're supposed to glue on it. I'm just pulling the strands out and doing them one by one. For me. I'm not going to bother cutting these because they're not removing or adding anything to the sample. Ready? These are the ones that broke super. It's still a bit, like, what do you call it? Ow. Still a bit sticky. I'm not happy about this, but I've been waiting for a long time for this, and I'm excited. So. What? I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. I'm putting not to. I have an idea. Let me dry this with toilet paper. I said toilet paper. Tissue dry now. Almost. Yeesh. Blech. You should use gloves unlike me. And also these fibers are dangerous. Don't be just an idiot like me handle them with hand. And inhale. Use masks, especially when cutting them. When you cut them, I see like little wisps disappear into the sky as if it's dissolving because they're so thin. It's holy shit. Okay. Yep, not sticky anymore. Okay, I'm gonna do one more effort. I can't break this. This is so rigid. This feels like the XY sample now. This isn't even flexing. Look. This is flexing. So I'm kind of disappointed with the amount it reduced. I mean, keep in mind, this is literally three thin strands of... <clears throat> Let me show you. This is the thing you're supposed to slap on your prints and I pulled one of these guys out and glued it on top. This is from just that one guy. Okay, oh, sorry, three of them straight, laid next to each other. This one, the other side, yeah, I portion of it, you can see what it's supposed to look like here. 
This is not supposed to look like this. I have to like manually spur with resin, but I was excited. From just doing that for two seconds, just super gluing it on, like you're super gluing a toy on something, like you're doing a janky, this crap. This is what I get. Two fingers, barely a millimeter of Okay, actually that's more. The deflection is actually surprisingly disappointing in some ways. But, I mean, it's a lot better than the original sample. I wish I made two, because these ones are hard to compare to. I can print one, but do you see? Oh, I managed to broke break. <laughs> yeah, after all that pressure, it broke. Let's see how it broke. So, it broke here, like the actual glass fibers broke. That was a, that took a lot of strength, okay? That would have probably broke the XY sample, and that is the X... So Sorry, this is the Z sample. So, what do we learn from this? The carbon fiber reinforcement so far, we've managed to immensely increase the Z strength of this part, but also add a lot of rigidity to it with just three fibers. I mean, again, I could just lay four on this very thin part and we could get more. This is amazing. Okay, so to make sure the super glue isn't what's making this strong, I'm gonna try breaking this. Oh. Huh. This broke differently. Actually, I feel like the super glue did have an effect, which is actually the opposite of what Cincy Kitchen had. I feel like the. actually broke differently. It broke a lot less linear. Do you see that? It broke like if it was connected to each other. Huh. So. This, you saw how much effort this took, right? I was pulling all my muscles on it. This did break kind of easily, especially considering it was a tiny bit smaller. So we put more force by default. Considering that, uh, considering all that, it broke differently. And so even though CNC Kitchen said, uh, which I trust them more, by the way, they have a freaking machine that calculates these things for them. I'm using my hands. Even though CNC Kitchen said it's worse, for me I feel like it was worse, better, and the crack lines actually, considering I put like on both sides a generous amount of them, I think considering how I saw that thing break, especially like the lines weren't straight like on the layers, it really looked like it just broke, you know, like you would break any injection molded part, I think that, yeah it was better, it felt better, but I'm not gonna trust that, it was more of a fun thing, you know, or anything. That's carbon glass fiber reinforced sample actually was a little bit below my expectations because it did break but it was like literally I didn't put any on the side and it was 10 okay if I use proper epoxy that would be even better so yeah I'm drying this patting dry see I'm drying this with a towel this isn't a scientific test the super glue is not fully cured but it did break the glass fiber like the grass glass fiber we didn't even connect it just broke so it did work and oh, by the way, if you're curious, this one literally broke, broke exactly flat, almost exactly flat on the corner. It was different. This broke like the actual like non-reinforced one, but it took a lot more force. Okay, this is the XY one with proper amount of fiber. Oh boy. Oh boy, are you kidding me? This is even flexing a tiny bit. Okay, this is what proper. Ugh. This is even flexing a millimeter. This is. Oh no, I am having. Do you see this? I am a dumbass. I shouldn't be doing this. Am I gonna die from just one time? I literally have this dug into my skin. I'm trying to pull them out. Okay, don't be a... F Sorry for swearing, but don't be a freaking moron like me, because I don't think one time is gonna... Oh, my throat. I don't think one time having all this stuff like freaking floating around your face is gonna kill you, literally. But it's gonna contribute very fast, so I'm gonna stop this thing after this. I put on a proper mask and go outside, okay? I was just too... Ugh, sorry, I felt like a fiber going down my throat. I shouldn't have done this, okay? But for science. Look at this! Do you see this? I'm... I... When I did this test, which was all the force my fingers could put on, it flex more than my entire arms are. Okay, I have an idea. Sorry, the fiber is still in my mouth. I feel weird screaming like that on video. I'm gonna mute this part. Mm. This is incredible. This is not even flexing a tiny bit. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm, I'm pulling a few strands of this and putting it in my hot end. Yes, I'm making a continuous fiber laying tool. After seeing that, imagine if every single layer had that. This was just one layer, the top and the bottom. If every layer had carbon fire fiber, it would be incredible. 
So, as you might have saw, that the test samples are incredibly more rigid. The AZ samples are strangely less rigid than reinforced, but either way, it's still incredible. So, this was glass fiber reinforcement. What we're gonna be doing next is trying to use screw and steel dowel pins to try and see how rigid we can make our prints be with other methods. I should mention that this cost me almost nothing, like 10 bucks for a giant sheet full of fiber. This glass fiber stuff is incredibly cheap. So, break. Ready? Oh. Wow. Okay. This is a bit loose, it just has a bit super glue in me. Okay. Wow. This is not even flex. This looks like it's still. So, tip number one. So, I spent a lot of time trying to break this, but obviously I couldn't. I guess that's the power of steel, and I tried to slide a dowel pin in there, and it was the same. I did do super glue here, but without super glue, it was just as strong. So, point taken, this thing is unbreakable, it doesn't bend a millimeter. So, this is steel and pin the screw. I will try more complicated shapes in my upcoming video. This was the self threaded one. Yeah, let's break this and see if the hole I made, because if the perimeter is acting as any helper. Oh, it did actually help, not gonna lie. That was stronger, but it snapped in half with very little force. Not very little force, a good amount of force, but more. It broke relatively flat with some variants. Yeah, this test sample looks still wet, and I should cut that. And of the carbon fiber that's gonna be in my lungs for the next week because a few guys are just so awesome that I make you with you, okay? Towels. This is supposed to cure in 15 seconds, but. I call that a lie. A fiber reinforced idea. Around terribly want to get our strands that are really terrible. Some of them are actually like this, so only this portions are touching. But I mean come on, I didn't want to whip my hands with epoxy. I have to deal with epoxy at 2 a.m. 3 a.m. Let's try the carbon fibers now. It has one strand on each side that isn't getting this main stress, and three strands on top and the bottom. Ready? Glass fiber. These should sh act as shock dampeners, by the way. It's a little bit unfair. I'm tempted to just grab it, but caramel fiber and glass fiber. Okay. Three, two, one. Wow. This works too. This is so rigid. The thing is, this is even more rigid than the others, I think, because the flax doesn't have room to play. This works too. I mean, I'm kind of want to see some stuff break right now. I don't know why I'm mad. All my ideas are... Ow. Damn, the glue slipped through the fiber? Sorry, the tissue? That's a bummer. So... This isn't breaking, okay? So, this was my very janky video on glass fiber reinforcement, but this is just the beginning of the story. Sorry for that incredibly janky video. I will try my best to make better videos from now on. However, what's upcoming in the agenda of the Amy is two things. A, I'm gonna mix uh, epoxy. So I kept calling uh, this stuff epoxy, but it was super glue. That was an accident. I'm gonna mix actual epoxy with two inch fibers and print my parts in kind of waste mode. Waste? No, I'm not gonna use waste mode. Just two parameters and pause the print midway. Fill it in completely with these stuff. Continue to print and cover it up and. What's that gotta do is fix a big flaw with this idea, and that is that I'm only covering the top and the bottom, and the inside is just not getting any fiber. So that's not good. So hopefully if this idea works, the do changer will have a resin injection tool that will fill the parts and you know with resin. Obviously I couldn't even break the z-axis anyway like this with only just the top and bottom and the sides, but I have a feeling that if I put the, the resin inside too, I'm gonna have insane Z strings and insane XY axis and this will be automated so you don't have to deal with all the crap. You just fill the syringe with resin and let it go. And also I'm still not giving up on my uh, carbon fiber lane tool idea. When I'm in Canada I'm gonna buy an aluminum block and DIY a heater block designed for carbon fiber because I'm having issues with modifying current hardens and I don't have the resources in Iran. So in the next video, as you saw, this was kind of unfair because it's literally like the plastic is acting just like a grip for the filament. Sorry, the steel and the 
dowel pins I tried. So for the screw idea, you will see more proper testing of this idea in the next video. I will be reinforcing actual practical parts that I have in my 3D printer and installing them on. And spoiler alert, some of them with the glass fiber is the only thing I've tried. Like on the sides is giving me a lot more sturdy, uh, you know, sturdy printer. But you know, we'll be trying the resin but the failed parts, we'll be trying the still force parts with just not just these shapes because you, in my video you, you will probably see that reinforcing parts with screw a lot of times doesn't work that well because the shapes are complicated and you can't exactly you know get this proper size screw anyway no more spoilers uh yeah stay tuned if you liked seeing that video to tell me because i am kind of actually not started recording on that yet so yeah anyway i hope you enjoyed it uh this method is incredible for your 3d printer by the way i've been doing this to literally all my parts of my 3d printer and let me tell you the sturdiness of my 3d printer has been increased tenfold do try this on your 3d printer it's amazing for 3d printers